I like to create a lifestyle for myself that I enjoy. This applies to different parts of my life, like love, work, how I spend my time and how I live. Two years ago, I decided to take a look into the zero waste lifestyle. Little did I know that I would fail so greatly. But why was I so interested in the first place? Being vegetarian and tinkering into minimalism for years, zero waste felt quite naturally to me. Buying less, producing less waste, and being more aware of my environmental footprint always sounds good to me. And I'm not alone. Zero waste has been a topic for years and has gathered huge support along the way on social media. It has become a buzzword. As the name says, zero waste is about not producing any waste at all. This applies for packaging, be it for food, or maybe it's products made out of plastic and other non-biodegradable materials. And also, no fast fashion. Basically, it's being more aware of the resources you use and your own impact on the world. This sounds pretty challenging in today's society, yet I strongly believe it's worth the perception and behavior change we should all go through. In the beginning, everything was very exciting for me, and I could not wait to deep dive into the topic. So I started researching, went through the internet for hours, read articles, watched videos and documentaries, and I talked to other people about the topic. It was all about sustainability and do-it-yourself, and it felt absolutely amazing to be part of this movement and community. I learned in my research that in Germany alone, each person produces 460 kilograms of waste per, on average. But let me put that in perspective. That's 3,000 apples, or more importantly, 470 liters of beer. That's a lot, and it's heavy. <laughs> Yet, Germany is not the worst when it comes to waste production being on 12th place worldwide, with the US on first place with 760 kilograms of waste. In my research, I also learned about that the term zero waste was not born on social media. It was born in meeting rooms of large corporations in order to save packaging material and transportation costs in order to save money and not to take care about the impact on the environment. I also learned about the five R's of zero waste. Refuse, not buying anything that produces waste. Reduce, do I really need five different household cleaners or maybe one is enough? Reuse, using what we have, maybe even in creative ways. Recycling taking care of proper recycling and actually learning about it, how it works, and rot, composting everything that is biodegradable. Living in a city apartment, the rotting part is not that easy, even not allowed in certain cases, like keeping worms on your balcony compost. But I was definitely into doing all the rest. I learned about new companies, new shops in the city, new do-it-yourself recipes, and new alternatives for everyday products. I was proud of myself for swapping all my shower products for packaging-free options, like ditching shampoo bottles for shampoo bars. I replaced cotton buds with a stainless steel ear cleaner, and I made my own deodorant. But I also packed my lunch into empty marmalade glasses and I bought handmade linen clothes instead of fast fashion. I also started a website project called Zero Voice That Love to be a central source of information for beginners and to spread the word. But over time, I found myself being caught up in the never-ending search of new alternatives for products. So much 
that the whole state of not producing any waste at all became an overwhelmingly big task for me that I thought I would be never able to achieve. I was constantly buying new things that were supposed to help me create and achieve a zero-waste lifestyle. And it just became another product category next to all the plastic packaged goods instead of replacing it. And of course, I was still producing waste. I felt like an absolute hypocrite. And social media influencers, who seem to do it all perfectly and just produce one glass of waste per year, do not help to keep the pressure low. Zero waste became an absolute stress factor for me. Whenever I went to the grocery store or to lunch at work or I needed to buy something off the internet, or the fact that I was never able to get to the packaging-free store in their opening hours. I just felt bad. To the point that the pressure of failing constantly became a daily companion in my life. These activities became a reminder of how much I was failing. Failing to not produce any waste at all. But I also couldn't go back to how it was before, not caring about the waste and just buying whatever I want. This felt completely unnatural to me. So I needed to find my own way on how to incorporate waste reduction into my life. Then I started thinking, of course, zero waste doesn't work. It's kind of set up to fail. I have basic human needs, just like all of you. I need to eat. I need to clean myself, I need to pay my rent, and I need to get a new piece of clothing every now and then to look nice at a client presentation. This experience became so bad for me that I needed to gain a new perspective, remove myself from the emotional drain of this project and analyze the facts. So why was I failing at zero waste? I started analyzing my own waste and I saw two main categories, food packaging and bathroom waste, like for hygienic or care products. And I took a look at my surroundings and constraints. This new perspective showed me that the circumstances in which a person lives crucially influence if one is able to achieve a zero or low waste lifestyle. Starting to think outside of the hype and taking a more critical look at it, I was able to find multiple limiting factors that influence our way to less waste. It starts with where you live as a factor. I live in a not-so-central area, so my grocery shopping options are limited to two supermarkets, which are not packaging-free. And not every city offers packaging free shopping options. Yet here in Munich, we have over a dozen options. Not many, but it's definitely a good start. I also live in an apartment without a garden, so I cannot grow my food myself. So how do I cope with the factor that my area of living is not ideal? I choose to work with what is there. So, whenever I go to my regular supermarket, I buy whatever best supports zero waste. For example, I don't buy a net of apples, I buy single apples and put them in the basket without a plastic bag. Same for all other vegetables. For other goods, I prefer glass containers over cans and plastic. For basics, like rice, or pasta or nuts, I go to the packaging free store, bringing my own containers whenever we're running low. Secondly, our mobility choices influence our possibilities. I don't own a car, which makes it hard to bulk shop somewhere. So whenever we need to stock up on our food supply, I grab my partner to help me carry everything home. I'm also thinking about to get a trailer, a trailer for my bicycle. Also, it depends on who you live with, like family, kids, 
roommates or pets. I live with my partner whom I don't want to force into a lifestyle which is not his. Luckily, he is very supportive and adapted in most cases. Talking about it openly and finding compromises and solutions together keep all parties happy. Further, your workplace and working hours are also a limiting factor. Jobs like being a scientist, nurse or doctor and having this dependency on disposable plastic items is absolutely necessary and mandatory. For me, as a designer, it's pretty easy to have waste reduction at the workplace in mind. Yet, I have quite unpredictable working hours and have to travel a lot for work, which makes it hard to prepare meals in advance or sometimes to even shop for groceries. So I'm planning more with my partner to tackle this challenge. Lastly, it also depends on your hobbies and free time activities. I'm a part-time tattoo artist, which has natural demands to hygiene, which requires single-use plastic items. Yet, just recently, I found a supplier who produces plant-based alternatives for conventional items, which are used during tattooing. And I just found this a month ago, and it made me incredibly happy to have found this, and it motivates me to keep my eyes open for further optimizations. Sure, we all have different dependencies and constraints. Yet, we shouldn't use these limiting factors as excuses. Being aware of them and keeping our eyes open for solutions one step at a time helps us to not feel stuck even when it's not perfect yet. All these new perspectives and realizations showed me what exactly is going wrong and what I can do about it. I was able to create simple step-by-step -step achievements for myself that motivate me to not give up on zero waste. I also learned to be more kind and patient for my, to myself and not pressure myself to doing it either perfectly or not at all. Zero waste is definitely not a topic that can be accomplished overnight. Taking baby steps helped me to spark new motivation for it and to grow into it nowadays. At the end of the day, instead of a few people who do zero waste perfectly, we need many people who do it imperfectly. Thank you. <laughs>